Welcome everyone. We're delighted to have with us today Jonathan Fielding, who has a long and distinguished career in public health practice and research. He was the Commissioner of Public Health with the Massachusetts Department of Health and was Director of the Los Angeles County Health Department for 16 years. And he's now returned to the UCLA uh, Fielding School of Public Health, where he's a distinguished professor of health policy and management. And he's also a distinguished professor of pediatrics at the UCLA Geffen School of Medicine. Jonathan, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. I wanna start by asking Jonathan a sort of a big picture question. Jonathan, you've had decades of experience in developing, implementing, and evaluating evidence-based interventions in state and local public health settings. From these experiences, what are a few of the major challenges you've encountered and how have you overcome these challenges? Well, you don't overcome all of them. <laughs> That's probably important to realize, you know, it's like a batting average. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that it's high, but, uh, but you can't assume that everything you try is going to work. And so one of the important things is to be nimble and to be able to pivot uh, from one thing to another in, in line with the customer. And the customer in these cases are the politicians and uh, their constituents, and particularly those that have a lot of uh, oomph, a lot of power. Um, I think one of the um, interesting uh, issues of of, um, of overcoming problems is to frame them differently. To frame something, you want to frame something in the vernacular. You don't want to start talking about, you know, chi squares or um, you know different designs. Should we have it? This is an RCT, but it's you know. So you have to be very careful what you say and use words that the average person can understand. It is rare that I find a politician that has a science background. Um, and uh, it's important to remember that, that politicians, um, the most important thing for a politician is being reelected. And uh, so you want to make sure you're, you're doing things that are consistent with their interests in helping their constituents, but also that reflect well on them. Um, I believe that one of the most important things to do is to make sure that uh, others get the credit. You know, uh, it's really not important for me to get the credit. It's very important for the people who need to provide the budget, who need to provide the entree, uh, for them to have a very positive experience and to be seen as the um, originators of the idea. Great. Great. Let me build on just one of those concepts you mentioned around the idea of sort of moving evidence to practice and policy, especially with policy audiences. You mentioned framing, and you mentioned sort of communicating in a way that makes sense for the audience. In your experience in the years working both at the state and local policy levels, are there any other tips you would give people about sort of how to how to frame their research or how to build their research so it's more relevant to the to the kinds of things that that policymakers are encountering. Well, the first thing I would say is don't call it research. Excellent. <laughs> what you what you want to do is to position something as making sure you have things right, that you have you have the knowledge necessary to be successful, because success is important for the people around you. Um, and, and both the political people and the people who really are there because they care about making a difference in the health of the public. I'm not suggesting that the politicians or the people at the highest level within a county or a city or a, uh, or a state don't care about those things. But it's up to you to, again, frame them in a way that makes people say, you know what, this is really important to do. I think another thing that's very important is to is to show them why it's important that <laughs> you do something. You want to serve up the problems that you're going to help to try and ameliorate, and why 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 it's a critical issue. Because oftentimes those issues are not ones that they've thought enough about. Take the current issue, the opiate issue. Until a year or two ago, it really wasn't high on most agendas, even though and last year we had about 42,000 deaths from overdose. Um, now it's on everybody's agenda, but you want to try and get it as early as you can in this with HIV the same way. Um, things like needle exchange. You have to sometimes realize that people's ideology is, is really what's driving their feelings. Mm -hmm. So, for example, with, with uh, needle exchange, 
it took a long time to get that in place because people said, well, you're helping addicts, you know, use drugs. Well, no, we're helping them do what they're doing anyway, we're doing it more safely, both for them and for others in the community with whom they interact. That's great. That's excellent. Excellent advice. I was trying to think sort of this notion of the the academic practice linkages, and, and I know a number of the people listening in today will be interested in that. If you're thinking about an applied researcher, someone interested in implementation science, and they want to partner with a public health agency at the state or local level, do you have any suggestions for the researchers and how they can build a partnership, establish these collaborations, make it a, a fruitful partnership that will that will sort of uh, further applied public health research? Well, it's I think the most important thing is to start with the perspective of the people you want to partner with. So if you're in a in a institution of higher learning, uh, you want to make sure that you have a good partnership with people in in uh, governmental public health, and you 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 need to start by saying, okay, what do what do those people care about? What do the people in practice care about? What can I bring to them that they don't have already? And how can I develop this relationship and solidify it and strengthen it over a period of not days or months, but years? And how can I then share the credit? How can we work together to get more resources uh, for the um, for the governmental public health department? Um, how can their work then help you to get more resources for what your, your uh, mission is? Um, so I think the partnership has to be strong, has to be uh, long term. And it can't be something that where you dive in when you're interested in something that unfortunately may not have, uh, have been the subject of, of strong relationships before. Yeah. yeah, that concept of parachute research doesn't usually work out too well, does it? Oh, Come in and we get our data. Usually there are rents in the parachute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get in trouble with those parachutes, don't we? Oh, that's great advice. Um, like skydiving, you really would like to make sure that that chute is going to open. Yeah, I think what the advice you gave will help us find the right parachute and help it to open. Um, you know, Jonathan, I was thinking you've also had many years of experience mentoring, training both public health students and, and, and medical students. Any advice you have for them as they go out into the world? There'll be a number of students listening to the video today um, in terms of how they can make have their work have impact and have impactful careers so that they help to ameliorate some of the, the some of the challenges that we're facing right now? Well, several things I would recommend. One of the things we're doing at, at our School of Public Health is trying to pair every student with a mentor, a graduate who's had a lot of experience and who really knows about what the implementation issues are, not just the scientific, you know, how do we approach this, but what, what's on the ground, what have been the challenges, how they've been overcome. So that's one thing I would strongly recommend. I think another thing for students, no student should get through a school of public health without having some governmental public health exposure. Mm -hmm. And so having an internship, having some time during the semester or quarter where you can, you know, work on a project, even if it's a, just a small thing, you want to get to understand the ethos, you want to understand the internal politics, you want to understand what what motivates people <laughs> you're going to work with. And so get some, some hands-on experience. There's no substitute uh, for that. And third, um, find people who really um, support research, who are interested in learning more, who want to be on the cutting edge, who really say, you know, this well, part of my responsibility is to advance the science. Um, just because they're in governmental public health doesn't mean that they shouldn't. But on the contrary, um, yeah. that their experience is critical in thinking ahead of what, what we can modify and how we can do better. That's great. Well, that's, too, that's super. Well, that's just been a, a great sort of movement through a number of the really key areas and sort of thinking of the practice side of implementation research. Um, as we wind up, is there any other any other thoughts or advice you have for our for our students in implementation science? Well, I have uh, advice. It's not just an implementation science, but it it would uh, facilitate implementation, and it's advice that others would give as well. But I want to reinforce it: tell stories. Yeah, great. 
tell stories. There's nothing like being able to go in and say, we did this here and here's how it worked and here's why I'm, I'm suggesting it to you. And there's no, no substitute for having the people that were actually involved in successful efforts to implement, to develop and implement and evaluate a program to say, you know, this will work so well for us. We got a lot of publicity for it. Um, everybody turned out a winner, but most importantly, we moved the needle. We made a difference in terms of public health. And uh, apropos, make sure you're looking at the important sources, one of which, which is underutilized, is the Healthy People 2020 Health Objectives of the Nation, and now very soon to be released the 2030 uh, Health Objectives for the Nation, because those will give you great opportunities. And you, if you look at that, you'll be surprised how much wisdom is in there. Thank you. And thank you, Jonathan, for, for telling us the story and, and sharing some of your, your great advice and wisdom about how we can do better and, and have our research have a better impact as we, as we work on trying to improve the, the public health of our nation and, and eliminate health disparities. So thanks again for joining us today. It's been terrific. Thank you. I'm, I'm with you, and health equity has to be at the top of our list. Thank you. Thanks a lot.